are you? What is this place? You have an important purpose. You are not the cursed boy from Udo. Never! The ancestors have sent me to help you understand your purpose and power. So the people of Udo believed they were condemning you to a miserable fate. They have brought you to the right place, where you will discover more about yourself and your destiny. You will know what to do. I will show them what it means to live without a mother. Don't worry, Mama and Baba. I will come and get you soon. It won't be long. I know and feel it. Let's do this, my Odudu. Practice till you perfect it and unleash the full power of your Odudu. Does his answer mean I am ready? I must find my family at all cost. The strange animal had vanished, its purpose fulfilled, but Kalechi knew that its appearance had been no mere coincidence. It had guided him here for a reason. What's a village without a king? What had happened to his father? How had his mother ended up in the clutches of these ruthless bandits? He was the chosen one, the boy with the prophetic tale, and it was time to embrace his calling. With one final glance at his mother's hopeful face, Kalechi stepped out of the shadows, ready to confront Ndidi and his men, ready to fight for the freedom of his loved ones and his village. But just as he was about to make his move, someone suddenly grabbed him from behind, covering his mouth and preventing him from making any noise. He fought against the stronghold, his tail whipping back and forth frantically. But the person would not let go. But then, a familiar voice cut through the tense silence. Shh, it's me, Ajani, your father, he whispered, his voice trembling slightly. Kalechi's body went slack, the adrenaline draining away as he recognized his father's presence. Ajani released his hold, allowing Kalechi to turn and face him. They embraced, holding each other tightly, the fear and tension from the past few moments melting away. In the dim light, filtering through the dense foliage, Kalechi could see the lines of worry etched into his father's face, a testament to the trials they had both endured. Baba, what are you doing here? Kalechi asked, in a whisper to avoid detection. Ajani's eyes darted to the bandit camp before settling back on his son. I was at the entrance of the jungle, trying to find a way out when I heard the commotion. I followed the sounds and stumbled upon their hideout. I overheard their vile plans just before I saw you, about to confront them alone. I held you back from attacking at that pivotal moment because I knew it could turn out disastrous. Father, I'm so glad to see you, Kalechi said, his voice thick with emotion. Ajani pulled back slightly, looking into his son's eyes. I'm glad to see you too, son, he replied, his voice gruff but filled with love. But we don't have time. We need to act fast. Kalechi's heart swelled with a mixture of gratitude and determination. We have to stop them, father. They plan to capture Chief Okinwa and destroy Udo village. We can't let that happen. Ajani nodded, his jaw set with resolve. I know, son, but we must be cautious. Rushing in without a plan could spell disaster for us and the captives. Kelechi felt the pressure mounting as he realized the gravity of their situation. Just a stone's throw away, his mother and the village women were in peril. Every part of him screamed to jump into action, to tap into his inner strength and protect his loved ones. But his father's steady presence tempered his impulsiveness. Ajani's years of wisdom and experience as a warrior shone through, even in this dire moment. Kalechi knew he had to trust in his father's guidance, just as he had to trust in his own abilities. What do we do, father? Kalechi asked, 
his voice trembling slightly. Ajani placed a reassuring hand on his son's shoulder, his grip firm and comforting. We'll need to work together, Kalechi. Now, my brave son, let me ask you, what is your plan? Ajani asked. I'm going to distract the bandits, Kalechi explained, his voice steady despite the weight of his words. While I keep them occupied, you need to make your way to the cage and rescue Mama and the other captives. Ajani opened his mouth to protest, but Kalechi cut him off, his eyes blazing with resolve. No matter what happens, Baba, don't come looking for me. It's too risky. Focus on getting the captives to safety, to the hideout where they can't be found. Kelechi placed a hand on his father's shoulder, his grip firm and reassuring. I know my way around this jungle and I know how to handle the bandits. Trust me, Baba, I can do this. Ajani searched his son's face, seeing the determination and courage that had grown within him during their time apart. With a heavy heart, he nodded, accepting the weight of Kelechi's words. I won't let you down, father. I'll keep them distracted for as long as I can, Kelechi said. Ajani's eyes shone with pride, even amidst the gravity of their situation. I know you won't, son, but remember, your safety is paramount. If things take a turn for the worse, you must retreat. We'll regroup and find another way. Kelechi hesitated for a moment, the thought of leaving his father and the captives behind causing his heart to clench. But he understood the wisdom in Ajani's words. They had to be smart, to think beyond the immediate battle. I understand, father, Kelechi said, his voice steady. And once you've freed the captives, take them to the safe hideout for the time being, after you must warn the village. Ndidi's men are coming, and Udo must be prepared. Ajani nodded solemnly. I'll make sure they're ready, but for now, let's focus on the task at hand. He placed a firm hand on Kelechi's shoulder, a gesture of trust and support. I will do as you say, son, but promise me you'll be careful. I can't lose you again. Kelechi managed a small smile. I promise, Baba. Now let's do this. The father and son parted ways, each determined to play their role in saving their loved ones and protecting Udo village from the impending danger. Kelechi moved silently through the undergrowth, his heart pounding in his chest as he prepared to confront the bandits and rescue his mother, while Ajani crept towards the cage, ready to free the captives and deliver the crucial warning to the village. His tail twitched with anticipation, the power within him humming like a coiled spring. He knew that this was the moment he had been training for, the chance to prove himself and protect those he loved. With a silent prayer to the ancestors, Kelechi stepped out from the cover of the foliage, ready to face the bandits head on. The time for hiding was over. Now it was time to fight. Drawing upon the skills he had honed during his time in the jungle and guided by Uzoma's teachings, Kalechi began to create a series of clever distractions. First, he picked up a handful of small stones and tossed them into the bushes on the opposite side of the camp, causing a rustling noise that immediately drew the attention of several bandits. As they moved to investigate, Kelechi darted to another location, snapping twigs and shaking branches to create the illusion of movement. The bandits, now on high alert, began to shout and point in different directions, their confusion growing with each new disturbance. Kelechi used their disorientation to his advantage, moving silently from one spot to another, always staying just out of sight. He sets small fires away from the captives, uses his tail to mimic animal noises, creating more confusion and panic amongst the bandits. Meanwhile, Ajani crept quietly towards the bamboo cage, his heart racing as he drew closer to his captive wife and the other women. With each step, he fought the urge to rush forward, knowing that any sudden movement could alert the bandits to his presence. As he reached the cage, Ajani carefully began to untie the bindings that held the door shut. 
His fingers worked deftly, years of experience guiding his movements. The women inside, seeing their chance at freedom, remained silent, their eyes wide with a mixture of fear and hope. Finally, the last knot came loose and Ajani gently swung the door open. He gestured for the women to exit quickly and quietly, his eyes scanning the surroundings for any sign of trouble. Ngozi emerged from the cage, her face streaked with tears of relief. When she saw her husband standing before her, she nearly cried out in joy, but Ajani placed a finger to his lips, urging her to remain silent. As the other women filed out of the cage, Ngozi embraced Ajani, her body trembling with emotion. Ajani, my love, she whispered, her voice barely audible. You came for us. Ajani held her tightly, his own eyes brimming with tears. I will always come for you, Ngozi, he murmured. Always. Suddenly, Ngozi pulled back, her eyes searching Ajani's face. Our son, Kelechi, she asked urgently, her voice tinged with worry. Have you seen him? Is he safe? Ajani hesitated for a moment, his heart heavy with the knowledge of the dangerous task their son had undertaken. He knew he couldn't lie to his wife, but he also didn't want to add to her fears. He is nearby, Ajani assured her, though he withheld the full truth of Kelechi's perilous distraction tactic. We must hurry now. Kelechi is creating a diversion for us to escape. Ngozi nodded, understanding flashing in her eyes as she rallied the other captives to follow Ajani. She took one last glance around the campsite, hoping for a glimpse of her son but trusting in his strength and in the wisdom passed down by Uzoma that now guided him through this dangerous ruse. Kelechi hid in the shadows, his body coiled with tension as he awaited the approaching bandits. His keen senses, honed by his time in the jungle, alerted him to their presence long before they came into view. As the first bandit stepped into his line of sight, Kalechi sprang into action, his tail whipping out with lightning speed and precision. The bandit crumpled to the ground, his cry of pain cut short by the force of the blow. Kelechi moved like a phantom, striking from the darkness and disappearing before the other bandits could react. His tail became an extension of his body, a powerful weapon that he wielded with deadly accuracy. Meanwhile, Ajani led the captives through the dense undergrowth, his heart pounding with the urgency of their escape. Ngozi and the other women followed close behind, their faces etched with a mixture of fear and determination. The forest seemed to close in around them, the twisted roots and low-hanging branches threatening to impede their progress. Ajani navigated the treacherous terrain with the skill of a seasoned hunter, his eyes constantly scanning the surroundings for any sign of danger. At times, the group had to crawl on their hands and knees to avoid detection, the damp earth clinging to their skin and clothes. As they pressed deeper into the jungle, the sounds of the bandit camp faded behind them, replaced by the eerie stillness of the forest. Ajani knew that every step took them closer to safety, but he also understood the risks that lay ahead. The jungle was a harsh and unforgiving place, filled with hidden dangers that could strike at any moment. Back at the camp, Andidi's rage boiled over as he realized the extent of the deception. His captives had vanished, and the sounds of commotion from the jungle's edge told him that his men were under attack. The bandit leader's eyes narrowed, his mind racing as he pieced together the events that had unfolded. This had happened because they were busily partying over their previous victory and were overdrunk, causing them to lose focus. So they were caught off guard by the cunning plot of Kelechi and Ajani. Indidi felt that something was not right. His sharp vision penetrated the darkness and deceit. He could not be easily tricked by distractions. A deep growl came from his throat when he found the cage open. His captives had escaped. With a roar of fury, Andidi summoned his remaining men, 
his voice cutting through the chaos like a knife. He knew that someone had dared to challenge his authority, to strike at the heart of his operation. He divided his men into two groups. The first group led by Basi, his second in command, were assigned to go to Udo village, do their usual and capture the chief and deliver him to Ndidi. Make sure the most important thing, his royal crown is also delivered. I will soon present myself as their new ruler, Ndidi outlined. The second group were to go after the missing captives in the jungle and bring them back to their cage. They will join the first group in the attack of Udo village after their mission was completed. They had to act with immediate effect. Anger twisted Ndidi's expression as he issued commands to his troops. Find them, he roared, veins bulging with fury. They can't have gone far. And as for me, leave the camp to me. I will find out who is behind this distraction and stop them, Ndidi said. And as he charged through the camp, his fingers wrapped tightly around his machete's hilt, Ndidi swore that he would make them pay for their insolence. Ajani had just reached the safe hideout, a hidden alcove veiled by thick foliage and known only to a trusted few, himself and Kelechi, when he heard distant shouts of alarm slicing through the night air. He guided the women inside before turning back toward Udo village. No matter what, do not come out of this hideout. Myself or my son, Kelechi will come back for you soon when the time is right, Ajani instructed. Ajani needed to warn Udo village of what was coming. Ndidi's wrath would be swift and merciless. With one last look at Ngozi, whose eyes brimmed with a mix of fear and gratitude, Ajani melted back into the forest shadows, his steps quickening as he raced against time itself. As Ndidi's men scrambled to follow their leader's commands, they scoured the jungle for any trace of the escaped captives. Ndidi's men scattered into the underbrush, their movements swift and silent as they searched high and low for any sign of the escaped captives. Despite their efforts, the traces of the villager's passage had been expertly concealed by Ajani's guidance. Frustration mounted as the minutes ticked by and the bandits grew increasingly anxious under the weight of Ndidi's fury. Meanwhile, Ajani burst into Udo village, his lungs burning and his heart pounding. He had pushed himself to the brink of exhaustion, driven by the urgency of his mission. As he stumbled into the center of the village, he raised his voice, summoning everyone to gather around him. The villagers, startled by the commotion, emerged from their huts, their faces etched with concern and curiosity. Ajani wasted no time in delivering his dire warning. He spoke of Ndidi's impending attack, his words painting a vivid picture of the bandit leader's wrath and the danger that loomed on the horizon. He recounted the escape of their loved ones as well, all made possible by his son, Kelechi. The villagers listened in stunned silence, their eyes wide with fear as they grasped the gravity of the situation. They knew all too well the strength of Ndidi's forces, and the thought of facing them head-on sent a chill down their spines. The village erupted into a frenzy of activity. Doors slammed, shouts filled the air, and torches flickered to life as warriors grabbed their spears and mothers clutched their children close. The knowledge of Ndidi's impending attack hung over them like a storm cloud, threatening to burst at any moment. Back in the jungle, Kelechi stepped from the shadows to face Ndidi alone in a clearing away from the camp. His figure was lit by the soft glow of moonlight filtering through the trees. Kelechi confronted Ndidi, his heart pounding in his chest as he revealed himself as the mastermind behind the distraction. The bandit leader's eyes narrowed, a flicker of recognition crossing his features as he took in the sight of the young man before him. Oh, so it's you, the monkey boy, Ndidi sneered, his words dripping with disdain. Kelechi stood tall, his gaze unwavering as he met Ndidi's mocking stare. My name is Kelechi, 
he replied, his voice steady and firm. As the tension between them crackled like electricity, Kelechi tried to appeal to Ndidi's better nature. He spoke of the possibility of change, of leaving behind the life of violence and cruelty and returning home to make amends. With a mixture of fear and determination, he drew upon the wisdom instilled in him by Uzoma and the experiences that had shaped his life. With a steadying breath, he began to speak, his words carrying the weight of his struggles and the hope for a better future. Nadidi, I know the pain you've endured, Kalechi said, his voice soft but firm. I too have felt the sting of rejection, the cruelty of being cast out by those who should have loved and protected me. Ndidi's eyes narrowed, but he remained silent, allowing Kelechi to continue. When Udo village sent me into the wilderness, I thought my life was over. I believed I was cursed, that I would never find acceptance or happiness. Kelechi's voice wavered, the memories of his exile still raw and painful. But I discovered something in the depths of my despair, Ndidi. I found the strength to turn the evil that had been done to me into something good. I learned to embrace my differences, to use my unique gifts to help others. Kelechi's words hung in the air, the sincerity in his voice palpable. Ndidi's expression remained stoic, but there was a flicker of something in his eyes, a hint of recognition, perhaps even a glimmer of understanding. You have the power to do the same, Ndidi. Kelechi pressed on, his voice growing stronger with each word. You can choose to let go of the anger and the pain to return home and make amends. Imagine the peace that could come from mending the differences between you and the village, the happiness that could flourish if we all learned to accept and embrace one another. Tears glistened in Kelechi's eyes as he spoke, the emotion of his words washing over him. He could see the conflict playing out on Ndidi's face, the battle between the hardened bandit and the wounded soul beneath. Pretty words, monkey boy, Ndidi sneered, his voice dripping with contempt as he took a step closer to the young man. You truly believe you can change what has been done? So can you bring my mother back to life? Ndidi asked, his voice almost curious. You know, Kelechi, he said, his voice dripping with false sincerity. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's time for a change for the better. Kelechi nodded, his heart pounding with hope that his words had reached through years of bitterness and pain. A silence fell between them, a momentary truce in which anything seemed possible. For a moment, it seemed as though Ndidi was considering Kelechi's words, his expression softening ever so slightly. But then, like a switch being flipped, Andidi's expression hardened once more, a cold smile twisting his lips. But you're a fool if you think I'll fall for your tricks. I have plans for you and for Udo Village, and no amount of your mewling will change that. Kelechi's heart sank as he realized that his words had fallen on deaf ears. Ndidi's heart was too consumed by hatred and the desire for revenge to be swayed by the promise of forgiveness and peace. You are just like your mother, naive, Ndidi spat out before launching forward with unexpected ferocity. Ndidi's powerful hand smashed into Kelechi's face so fast it was hard to see. The powerful hit made Kelechi fall back and land on the ground. Kelechi's face throbbed with terrible pain that made it hard for him to see straight or think clearly as he struggled to get up. As he fought to stay conscious, Kelechi's last thought was of his family, of the village he had sworn to protect. And then, as the darkness closed in around him, he felt himself slipping away, his fate hanging in the balance as Ndidi towered over him a twisted smile on his face. As he slowly regained his senses, he realized that he was no longer in control of his own body. Ndidi's cunning had prevailed. 
With a triumphant cackle, the bandit leader dragged his unconscious captive deeper into the jungle, unaware of the fierce determination that still burned within Kelechi's unyielding spirit. Kelechi fought to regain control, straining against the invisible force that held him bound. He could feel the damp earth beneath him, smell the pungent scent of decaying leaves, and hear the eerie sounds of the nocturnal jungle. But his limbs remained unresponsive, his body a mere vessel in the hands of his ruthless adversary. As they ventured deeper into the jungle's depths, Kelechi's mind raced. He knew he had to find a way to break free, to save his family and the village of Ndidi's treacherous plan. But how? His mind was his only weapon, and his captor was relentless, his eyes gleaming with malicious intent. Time seemed to stretch into an eternity as Kelechi desperately searched for a glimmer of hope, a way to regain his freedom and save his village from imminent danger. The faint glimmer of resilience within him flickered, refusing to be extinguished, even in the face of such adversity. Ndidi's laughter pierced the heavy jungle air as he tied Kalechi to a tree at the edge of his camp. The ropes bit into Kalechi's wrists, but it was the sting of humiliation that burned fiercer. Ndidi paraded in front of him, his every word dripping with scorn. 